Hey guys, Craig Sleeman here with Douglas Rods. We're out here today on Oneida Lake uh, doing a little blade baiting. It's uh, fall, it's October 6th, and uh, we've really got a kind of a, a light breeze to deal with today, obviously. It's kind of a slick, slick lake, but um, the blade baiting has been really good. And the reason we're picking a blade bait is just time of year, um, what the fish are feeding on. We're kind of matching the hatch here. Uh, we've marked quite a few perch uh, in the area. Uh, working a little contour here, kind of comes from a little flat and goes up on a little break. And uh, what we're really concentrating on is just making sure that we've got our baits in the strike zone. Um, we're looking to, you know, create a drift. If we can here with a little bit of breeze would be really nice. But um, what we're trying to do is just cover some water, just to see if we can locate some fish. And, you know, hopefully we've got, uh, you know, we've got the right conditions for a fall bite. I mean, the perch are starting to congregate. They're starting to school up and uh, the walleyes are kind of chasing them up, up onto these breaks. And, um, last couple of weeks, the bite's been, been picking up on the blade baits. So we're going to continue to kind of work through our day here and just kind of break this down and bring you guys some action uh, right here in central New York. So I want to talk a little bit about the walleye rig. Um, the one that we're using today includes the um, X Matrix here from Douglas. I'm using a 610. XF, I've got an extra fast, it's on the three blanks, so it's a 6103. And the reason I picked this rod today, just because we're throwing these blade baits around, it's a half ounce blade bait, um, so it's not super heavy, but it's got accuracy. And the one thing I love about this 610 XF is I can accurately pick apart, you know, a rock pile, a drift, you know, if I've, I've got a specific style of presenting a bait that's working better than another. I know everybody's had that day where, you know, throwing a little J in it or throwing it up current or throwing it up into the wind is, is really helpful in catching some of these fish. And so start off with my, uh, my Douglas XF and then I'm working through with uh, just a 2,500 to 3,000 size reel. Um, I'm pairing that up with a 15 to 20 pound super line, uh, any sort of, you know, strand or, you know, some of that new Berkeley uh, Fusion that fire line has been great. Um, we also are working with Cortland right now on, on uh, some of the 15 and 20 pound braids they've been working with, it's been great. So we're going to pair that up with a, a leader. That leader is going to be a fluorocarbon anywhere from 15, 16 pound up to 20. It's probably be the heaviest that I would go. But the reason we pick 16 to 20 or 15 to 20 is that it stiffens up the end of that, that line. And what that allows us to do is to actually fish our blade bait fairly clean. And with it keeping the, you know, the tension or that, that stretch a little bit further away from our super line, we tend not to get as many tangles. So pair that up with an I1 baits bad boy blade bait and you've got yourself a really great blade bait and rig. Maybe I'll catch one on that. God, I'd like to catch one on this thing. There he is. He hit it on the way down. Oh, little guy. Is that a perch? Come on now. Oh, little walleye. Little flipper. Hey, bud. It's one of our little, probably 2016 or 18 hatch. That's a little guy here today, but he soaked that little perch up. Oh. <laughs> That'll be in the bloopers. So I'm actually going to stop my line just short of where that blade bait's going to hit the water. And the reason that I'm doing that is I'm just actually physically grabbing the line with my trigger finger and it's allowing for that blade bait. No matter what rotation it got when I sent it out, it's going to stop it and actually allow it to fall at a really true rate. And so what's happening is a lot of guys, when they go to cast blade baits, they say that they bungle or, you know, they'll catch the actual line when it's, when it's um, being sent out. And what's really happening is that blade bait is, you know, kind of rotating itself out over the water and then it grabs that main line or that leader that we're tying to. And of course, the other reason that we don't get a lot of tangles when we cast is because we're using a heavier leader. From here, as I go ahead and just retrieve this, I just pull it once and I know that it's started because it's starting to, you know, work its way off the bottom with that simple vibration. And with that, every time it hits the bottom, my line will go slack and I'll know that it's on the bottom ready for another retrieve. I also like to kind of pick up my line with my reel and the reason for that if that blade tends to hit the bottom or a fish tends to pick it up or grabs it i'll know exactly where that blade bait is so i can even set the hook and uh, apply that pressure as needed to uh to get that sucker to the boat so 
going to keep working this back back and forth a little bit. I'm only pulling, you know, three to four inches. And that's the reason that XF is just, you know, it's an awesome way to feel that vibration and understand where that bait is at all times. I think one of the keys to having a sensitive rod, especially when you're, you're pulling a blade, blade bait or a blade styled bait, is not only feeling the vibration of the bait to know if you are actually hooked up or the line is actually caught on a hook, but I also feel like the bite sometimes can be on the fall. And without that sensitivity and without that reach, you know, and, and having that, that really nice extra fast tip, I think what happens is we miss a lot, of, a lot of bites as that bait is falling through the water column. I know, you know, we were out Sunday and we had some, some bites where as far as we could cast, we were getting bites on that first drop. And I could feel that every time because I'm, I'm keeping in contact with my bait at all times, but I'm also allowing the rod to do the work. Um, and we're catching, you know, some pretty decent sized walleyes. I mean, we up in Green Bay, Wisconsin, we're, you know, eight, nine, 10 pounders on a, on a 610 and handling them with ease, you know, obviously landing them on the reel, but, you know, letting that rod do the work. And, and I think if you can give up some, some casting length with a 772, you're going to gain it back with sensitivity and also responsiveness. So sometimes it's always pays off just to downsize just a little bit. And the accuracy, I think is the one thing that I really like about this rod too, is, you know, I can pinpoint and break down a, a rock pile. I can throw at specific boulders, you know, when we get into real specific situations where, you know, fish are only on certain sides of certain, you know, rock piles. This really helps to cast that up. I think I'm perched up. Yep. So this is actually going to be good. Talking about matching the hatch. Oh, no, it's the world's smallest walleye. This is so cool to see, though. The best part about catching up with the young of the year, could be a two-year-old, is that we know that this is healthy. They're in here feeding on them. This little guy. Sorry. Look at this little, little white tipper. Some big eyes. And you can see, too, the walleye's eyes are on top of his head. So the best part about that blade bait is when it does come up and down off the bottom, those walleyes are looking up, and as it falls, they can kind of track it, follow it down to the sand or down to the mud that you're fishing in. I think that's what I really like about, you know, fishing a blade bait is just the constant change of, you know, the dynamic of how you can retrieve it. You know, we can retrieve it by, you know, just moving a rod tip and having it move three or four inches. We can really give it a good rip, pull it off the bottom, have it come up two or three feet, or we can actually slow roll it. And that's another thing that you know, we find if we're trying to get over the top of maybe a weed line or we've got some areas where there's some rock that's coming in contact and we don't want our bait to dive down in the rocks, just a slow retrieve can sometimes trigger a bite as it comes skating by. So a couple different ways to fish these things. Just want to talk a little bit about our equipment today. We've got the i1 Baits Bad Boy Blade Bait. And the special thing about the Bad Boy Blade Baits, not only the finishes are awesome, but Mike actually puts on a Mustad Ultra Point size six hook in the back, size eight here on the belly. And what that allows us to do is kind of apply this not only in that search mode, but when we're retrieving it, it doesn't tend to bungle. And what I mean by bungle is actually collect and have that larger hook come up and grab that leader. So what I like about that smaller hook down here on the chest is it actually keeps the hook away from coming in contact with our line. And I love that big hook in the back. Really when you set the hook, it does collect either under that chin or inside that mouth when they go to pin that thing to the bottom. So check that out. We've got a size six, size eight here, and it really helps that nice gold finish today. We got 24 karat perch because obviously the fish we're after are feeding on those perch. And we're going to see that we've caught quite a few of those this afternoon. And uh, we're just keying on a match in the hatch. Nice. Blading kid? Flat jig? Nice. You know, talking about size of blade bait, um, I think is a super important piece, especially for guys that are, you know, fishing with different conditions. You know, if we've got a deeper application. We're trying to fish a lot of current in deep breaks and deep, you know, steep breaks. 
we're probably going to have to up the size of our blade bait. Uh, we landed on the half ounce just because of its accessibility, you know, with not only casting, but also in its retrieval, it's not tough to start. It's not tough to pull. Uh, we fish these in the St. Lawrence River, um, and a lot of times they're fishing, you know, very heavy current, and they still make it to the bottom, even though they're half ounce. It may be a little light for some guys, but, you know, I like that in the fact that I'm fishing a lot of, um, you know, structure. We've got rocks, you know, we get up to the Detroit River, we've got rebar and riprap and, you know, areas where we don't want that heavy bait diving between those rocks. We want to kind of skip it across the top of them. And uh, I think that half ounce is kind of our sweet spot. We've kind of landed, you know, in that area for those. But um, it's personal preference, I think, too. I mean, conditions with more wind and more current, more waves, probably, you know, stiffen it up and heavy it up a little bit. But especially on a day like today, we're going to stay with that half. So another couple different styles of retrieval could be just simply just picking your rod tip up three or four inches and just getting your blade bait to swim. You know, I've seen a lot of reactionary bites where the fish are just super lethargic, the water's cooling off. You know, today we got a real slick day. They're not super active, even though there's some fish around and they're feeding on perch. They're just not out chasing. We don't have a wind or current really pushing bait and congregating it. So I'm doing a real small, light, slow lift, trying to get those fish to just come over and inspect my bait, pin it to the bottom and, and maybe hold on to it. Um, you know, another thing we can do too is really get it to rip. If we want to take that rod and, you know, use the backbone that's built into the blank here and really give it a good pull, that'll get that bait to swim, you know, maybe a foot, foot and a half off the bottom. And I think that sometimes too will attract some of those walleyes coming and see what's going on, what's dying, you know, why that bait's scattered and why it's going in different directions. And, uh, so, you know, don't be afraid to change up your cadence. You know, you can go from short, slow, easy lifts to kind of larger, getting it up off the bottom, letting it swim and let it do its work. These fish have, you know, a lot of the, the charter captains, a lot of the guys that have been out here being, have been successful in the last few weeks, have been catching a lot of these fish in their summer patterns. Just our water's super warm right now. Um, you know, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, you know, for this lake in October is, is fairly high. It's a shallow lake, but the one thing that's happening right now in October is these walleyes are really starting to congregate and push towards their wintering grounds. Um, they're looking for a piece of structure to kind of hunker down on. They're looking for some bait. And I think, uh, you know, they're coming out of that suspended mode and they're working their way, you know, up into some of these different uh, different areas of the lake that, that are holding these bait fish. And, and I think that's why we're targeting, you know, some of these transition areas. We've got, you know, this mud flat kind of comes up onto a ridge and then there's some weed line that's up even further. And, you know, the fish that were stuck in the weeds all summer long are starting to kind of leak out as those weeds start to uh, to die off and get a little dusty and not give off as much oxygen or, you know, as much cover, the fish are starting to relate to, you know, rock piles and, and you know, different breaks where there's some three or four feet of transition. So keep concentrating on those, those little key areas and, uh, you know, look for those fish to start to kind of school up a little bit and get around some of that, that late fall or early, early winter structure as we start to get through October into November. I think one advantage of hiring a local guide or a local charter captain to take you out on, on his home body of water, whether it's Lake Erie or Oneida Lake or a Finger Lake, you know, especially where we fish, you know, we've got a lot of local knowledge, but also we get a lot of connections and we make connections with people. We make, you know, lifelong friends out on the water. And, you know, the best part about fishing with, you know, a pro or someone like ourselves is we're able to keep in contact. You know, we can tell you what's going on. You know, we don't mind that phone call. Hey, I'm bringing my family up for a weekend. We're going to be here, going to be there. And with the time on the water that we spend, we're going to be able to put you on some fish. And, you know, hiring one of us, like I said, to get you out, get you started. We're going to have the best equipment in hand. We're going to be on the right bite. We're going to be on the new and up and coming technology. And we'd really be able to get you on some fish. And, you know, that's the one thing I've really enjoyed in the last couple of years is in guiding and, and, you know, being a charter captain on Lake Erie is, you know, the people that I meet and where they're from and their story and, and being able to share it with me and a piece of, you know, what I like to do is and sharing it with them. And I think, you know, when you make that connection, it's, you know, it's, it's fishing, it's a fishing family. And, and we really do enjoy, you know, not only entertaining and catching fish, and that's our main goal, but, you know, making those, those lifelong connections and continuing to pass this tradition of, of the outdoors and, and enjoying, you know, what we have, the creators made for us to be out here and to, uh, you know, just continue his legacy. So looking forward to seeing everybody.